Yeah, it's great to have this uh, opportunity to uh, present the study. Uh, really appreciate the uh, invitation from the committee. So this is a teamwork by uh, three groups, and uh, my group in UCSB and uh, uh, NOAA, because it's a, a, a project funded by the NOAA CP, uh, CPC uh, uh, project, and also UW group, because I moved UW to uh, UC Santa Barbara last year. And also I appreciate uh, the support from uh, uh, Mike Wallace and uh, Cecilia. And uh, the, the idea here is that because the theme of this workshop is to discuss is the uh, interaction. But here I want to uh, argue uh, is the amplification in fact probably is signal dependent. And uh, but in the summertime, it's more like some uh, circulation, atmospheric circulation influence uh, the sea ice. Probably in the other three seasons, uh, the sea ice probably have some feedback to the uh, atmospheric circulation. But in the summer, uh, what I found is that uh, the circulation have more active role to drive a sea ice. And, uh, oh, OK, so we start, I want to start from this, uh, this slide. This is a paper uh, published last year. And from the title, you can see uh, the idea is the CO2 drive a, drive a sea ice. This is also uh, the consensus in our community for like the 20, uh, uh, 10 years. But from the uh, abstract, you can see uh, their conclusion is that most of the model in IPCC, uh, if forced by CO2, uh, the forcing, probably uh, show some uh, light warming trend or retreat trend as observed. And they conclude that probably the model is insensitive or whatever uh, cannot generate too strong uh, warming or long wave radiation, uh, emit long wave radiation to, to melt the ice. And uh, so, but let's see, uh, so this is observation. Uh, this is from another paper. Uh, this, is the, oh, this is another, uh, this is observation, this is the older model. So it seems like the, the model uh, underestimated this observed, uh, the fast retreat uh, in Arctic sea ice. So, so let's see the observation first. So this is observation, ERA and the CMB5 uh, 30 model uh, example, and this is another uh, a large example uh, experiment, 40 model average. So I want to show uh, is the, my uh, plot in two different types. One is, is the zonal mean, I call it the meridional vertical uh, plot. So that is the 60, uh, 60 north to 90 north, and this is the vertical, and this is the zonal, zonal component. And this is the spatial pattern. And uh, this uh, shading is the temperature, the linear trend of the JJA, summertime temperature. And this contour is the, the, the Japanese height, okay, linear trend in JJA. So for uh, 36 years. You can see in the observation, we have this, uh, this, uh, this uh, boundary layer or bottom layer warming, like the heat, heated blanket, okay, cover the sea ice in, in the JJA. And this is the anticyclone uh, center in the Arctic, right? It's an anticyclone barotropical structure. This is observation, and this is a spatial pattern of this, the, this the warming. It's like the extended from Greenland to the Russia, and have this long, uh, long tail extended from like, Greenland uh, to this uh, uh, Russia side. And, but all the model forced by CO2, uh, it seems like the, this, this model is a fully coupled model. Model can capture some melting. So there is a feedback there. So with this feedback, the so model cannot capture this uh, the bo uh, bottom layer warming. So it seems like this warming is not due to this sea ice feedback in the summertime in JJA, okay? And uh, there's something here, but it's the spatial is different from the observation. So this tells me something like the, the less warming in, in, uh, in the model. Why should, why should they be the same? Sorry? Why should they be the same? It's a, it's a multimodal mean. Yes, yes. But the observation, no right. Observation. But if we assume this is a forced response, we should see some similarity, right? So this is my argument. So, so to my point is that this part is not totally due to this the force stuff, right? So probably there's a component here is due to some internal internal forcing. We want to quantify the role of uh, from internal forcing uh, in uh, in general is, is a feature. So this is the idea, and uh, so another thing is I want to mention is uh, anthropogenic forcing favors the uniform head increase everywhere, something like this because the, the bottom layer increased a little bit, and accumulatively, higher level have a higher, uh, higher uh, the, the right, the, the height rise strongly. So you can see uh, this observation, 200 meter bar and 700 meter bar, and the spatial pattern, the uh, JJA, the potential high trend. So you can see clearly there is an anticyclone here. Okay, low level anticyclone, high level anticyclone, and the model gave us like the uniform increase everywhere. And in a low level, it's very small. You cannot see this, the, you know, sharp, so it's like the 
around here, three to six something everywhere. In the upper level, it's like a 10 meter per decade. The unit here is the, t uh, the meter per decade. Okay, so in the observation, we see it's like the 20 something. Okay, in the observation, we see 20 meters per decade height rise in the last 30, 30 years. In the observation, in the model forced by CO2, we only can see maybe one, one half, just half of this observed value. And this is a very robust feature in all the, uh, all the data, six uh, different type of uh, real analysis. And this is the, this is the potential high uh, Z200 over Greenland. So we also check this uh, radio sound data. It's very consistent. It's not a data problem. It's not a real analysis data problem. It's a real feature. So this the increasing head. It's the, this, this, uh, this stuff is real. And so I want to uh, give some uh, idea is that uh, the, the original idea is that there is a box like to include all is the party feedback stuff. And uh, the, the greenhouse effect may be the trigger, okay? Just play a role to trigger is the, is the box of uh, the chain of feedback. But I want to argue probably there is some dynamical warming pattern. I give as a name as a, it's a polar heat wave. It's very similar to the heat wave effect. There's an anticyclone there, and this anticyclone favors a downdraft, and the downdraft favors the bottom layer warmed by this adiabatic warming. And this, this warming can favor the long wave radiation to mild CS, add some additional part of warming to, to, to this, the, this, the, this the in, in real observation. OK, so this is my argument here. And we use some uh, observation mode, all, the, all the data available. So we also have a model. Uh, we have an Ecom5 model we couple with a slab ocean model, very simple model. So in this model, there's a no ice dynamic, just uh, uh, the thermal, thermal uh, sea ice. So there's a no ice drift, just locally mounted if the, the air is warm above. And here is the observation. So this is our figure. So we focus on the JJA circulation linked with September sea ice. Okay, JJA with September, some lead by a couple months. And this is a September sales trend in September uh, in Arctic. You can see there's a large melting trend here. So it's a uh, circle by just a blue counter. So we use this one as an index, like this blue, uh, blue line here. Another thing is still the same thing, like a circulation trend in JJA. And this, the vector is a wind surface, 10 meter wind. So it's a very biotropical structure. There's an anticyclone there extended from Greenland to here. And this wind probably favors is the S export from the basin to the North Atlantic. And another thing is that there's a bunch of uh, index here. So one is the temperature in the bottom layer, this layer, and the average in, uh, in our Arctic, north of a 70 degree north. And also uh, specific humidity in the same layer, same domain. Okay, average north of 70 degree. Another is the long wave radiation downward at the surface. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, the red one, green one, and the purple one correlate very well. And this dot black line is Z200 over here. Z200, 10, uh, 10 kilometers above surface, highly correlated with is the thermal state in the Arctic if we, if we do average. So if you calculate correlation, detrend it, so you can get like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 for all this stuff. Quick question. Yes? The pattern of the September sea ice, is that roughly the same pattern that the SEMA produced for September? Yes. Very so, although the time series of the aerial extent of the decline may be, may be a little bit less than observed, the pattern is actually very much what was observed. Yeah. Observed. Yes, I agree. But maybe due to wrong reason, right? I will, I will talk about it later. Is there a simple reason for that pattern? Because the, the, it's a, the, the thin area, right? So if there's an anthropogenic faulting, that area is the most sensitive to this the warming atmosphere, right? That is the place to melt first. And uh, this mode also favor, this mode also favor this warming here. So still, so I will, I will talk about that part later. You can see that. So I use this plot, I use all the index here and correlated with Z200 everywhere in the Arctic. So this is the, the total part and this detrended part. And this is a wind. So you can see a, a reverse sign on this, this, part, this part. So sea ice September correlated with JJA circulation everywhere, very high correlation. And the temperature is no, I don't change the sign, and the humidity and the long radiation. So the trend is still get the same thing. So this suggests to me that uh, the same circulation pattern control all this stuff, not control, high, uh, correlated with all this stuff in the summertime.
like JJ circulation connect to the lead, uh, leading the September CIS, but also correlate well with the simultaneous uh, along the radiation warming and humidity state. So this is a, this is a, this is the point of this plot. So we we have to understand why is that. If model cannot capture this feature, but can also get some melting, we, we need to understand why 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 the model can do that. So another thing I put here. So this is the observation, a vertical uh, vertical structure. Another thing is I get get a model uh, observation. I uh, using September CIS correlated with this uh, vertical structure. You can see uh, this is a regression. Shading is a regression. Okay, contour is not clear here, but contour is a correlation. I detrended everything. So that means the September sea ice correlates with the JJA jet potential high, like this pattern, and with temperature like this pattern. We, we try different lead and lag. We find this very robust feature. That means the September sea ice preceded by the, this type of uh, anticyclone, very barotropical deep troposphere feature. And the, the temperature field responds to this the circulation like it's warming everywhere in the bottom layer. But not here, very close to the surface. Okay, just above the surface. So that means the CS melting cannot warm the, very, the layer very close to the surface, just above that. So I think that this indicates probably there's no feedback in JJA or in September or something like that, because the, it, we don't see the warming here, but the warming above is a, the surface layer. This is, the, this is from observation. We remove the trend. And the correlation here, year to year trend is 0 0.7. A reverse sign, okay, negative uh, 0 0.7. And here is 0 0.6. So I think there's some physical meaning here. And uh, again, I put this plot. The so model cannot generate this one, but still can get a melting. Even the spatial pattern shows some maximum melting here. But uh, probably, as I said in the title, probably due to a wrong reason. Because uh, in the reality, probably it's a two component. One is the greenhouse effect and the amplification effect, but also have some dynamical warming. But this model may just be dominant by this anthropogenic forcing, this greenhouse effect. Pictures. Yes, in some form, you can go back to the previous slide. If you took single runs of the models and detrended the single run time series, do they produce these types of vertical structures? Some model uh, cannot capture this feature, but uh, NCAR model can capture this very well. Okay, NCAR model and uh, uh, BCC model can capture this pretty good. But uh, another, like uh, we, we checked the 26 model, and the 20 model cannot capture this feature. And that means uh, there's, a, there's a decoupling between the circulation and the sea ice in most of the model. So, so we, in observation, we see there's a coupling. So sea ice coupled with the circulation. Okay, so we test, the first idea is to try to put the sea ice in our model to see how circulation respond, the model responds to the sea ice. So as uh, many people did uh, in 2014 paper, so we're using our model to retest this idea because we, we saw the problem model is model dependent stuff. So we, we have model, we put observed sea ice, uh, like a trend and a melting and SST in ectotropics. And then observation, warming, boundary forcing in our model. In the JJA, we, we couldn't see this uh, response circulation. It seems like the, the air in JJA in summertime is too, is too warm, doesn't care about the boundary forcing. But the vaccine or other stuff can warm the air above. But in other two, three seasons probably there is some feedback okay, from this, this, uh, this boundary stuff. But in the summertime, I, I don't see this feature. So I want to argue in the summertime, probably circulation play a more active role to drive a, to drive a sea ice. So, so next, so lead us to start probably, probably a circulation drive a sea ice. So how to test this idea? So we just put wind, observe the wind in uh, the same model. So we're using some nudging or like the assimilation techniques to put observe the wind in our model three dimension everywhere from surface to the, uh, to the top of the atmosphere. So this is the observation again here. So this the contour is the, is the vertical velocity, the trend, the JJA. So if we put this, we train our model to put observe wind, just a U and a V in our model, somehow we can get this circulation trend and also this bottom layer warming and this, the, this, the, this the down drop because this is a vertical velocity. The particle means it's a, it's a downward motion. 
because there's a there's a uh, anticyclone, and in the bottom layer there's some friction, so there's some uh, isotrophic component. The favorite is the downdraft, and the favorite is the bottom layer warming. And the model can capture is the, the temperature pattern in the low level very well. And our CS model, there's no ice dynamic. So the ice just uh, melted locally. But, but we still can see this ice melted over there. And the long variation is increased. So this model only changes wind. But we also can see there's an increasing trend of long variation downward. And also somehow it's the uh, specific humidity change. We only change the wind. We don't change the other thing. We mute the CO2 forcing. We only change the wind pattern in the model. We can capture, we can somehow get this increasing trend of the, uh, uh, the moisturing, moisturing trend of the air and the warming trend of air and also this long variation increasing trend in, in our model. So point is the probably circulation play a key role to, to couple everything together in the summertime. So this is the experiment we want to, uh, we want to uh, support. And we also test something we just a couple we just imagine the wind above 700 meter bar, we still can capture part of this feature. Okay, everything now here is above 700 meter bar. We nudging to the observation. And below that, we just let the model determine its state. We still can ca capture part of the feature. So that means that the, the deep chopsphere stuff is very important to couple this, the, this, 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 this entire system. So I, let's uh, summarize uh, what I have here. In early days, it's like the atmosphere and the normal state. But due to this the dynamical role here, and the play is the, to warm air anticyclone downdraft, and the, the bottom layer is pretty warm, and emit this long variation to melt sea ice. And very similar to this uh, like, is the mid-latitude heat wave mechanism. So I, I just borrow this plot from the uh, wiki page. So we want to quantify a little bit of this stuff. So we have a CS. We're using the just a standalone uh, ocean CS model. And we put a ERA force in there. So we can reproduce the, so we can, repro re we can reproduce this the CS melting. This is the extent melting trend. And the next, next one is a modified forcing. In this uh, ERA forcing, we remove anything related to this uh, circulation index. We call it the Z200 over Greenland. We remove anything related to this index in JJA, only in summertime. We rerun this one. We only get this much of uh, uh, ice melting. And this is the original one. This is the modified one. So we argue probably circulation alone can explain 60% of a CS melting in September. So this 60% is due to this circulation change. And this is the volume change, still like a 60% due to this circulation forcing. And uh, so I want to skip here. It's the melting. And uh, so, but we know the circulation rise in the Arctic still due to uh, anthropogenic forcing. How to quantify that part? So we tried um, uh, like four uh, different methods. So one is that uh, we checked the observation. Global mean height increase, the trend uh, in the JJA is like a five, six meters per decade. And uh, over Greenland, it's like a 20. So if we think that this is due to anthropogenic forcing, and this 20 is due to something else, probably anthropogenic forcing can explain 30% uh, of this is, is a rise. We tried, we also checked the long-term variability and also checked the model. In general, we get this 30% of this rise over Greenland. The height rise is due to some anthropogenic forcing. So we do some simple uh, 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 mathematics stuff, we get a 30%. So this 6% is the circulation drive a sea ice, 6%. But the circulation itself, probably 70% due to internal one. So internal faulting can explain the CS melting maybe 40%. So this is the, our uh, main, main conclusion. And uh, another thing is very interesting. If you look at the recent the trend, JJ, you find the maximum rise there. But if you look a little bit longer from 1948, there's not very clear. So it's a five, everywhere is a five, but here is a no trend. So that means the trend here, if you look the longer time series, is more like some this different data site shows some like interdecadal variability. So like the, uh, Martin said this morning, if 40, even 40 years is not long enough to, to well capture this the internal stuff. So yeah, so I hope uh, in future, if we want to predict the Arctic change, we need to understand the three pathways. One is the polar heat wave, anthropogenic faulting, and probably there's another way is the 
as for genetic faulting influence indirect way from uh, influence the tropics, uh, uh, influence this heat wave to uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Arctic change. So do I have a still time? 20 minutes, right? Uh, one minute. So I want to uh, just end with this plot. So this is another paper, early paper. So observation again, you can see the maximum stuff. And the IPCC model shows uh, if anthropogenic sourcing favor maximum height rise in the, pol in the tropical region and the light rise in the, in, 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 in the polar region. And uh, so why is that? Because uh, there is a, there's a tropical part. If we remove a zoonomic component, you can say there's a tropical imminent wave chain to the two poles and a link to Arctic chain and Antarctic chain. And uh, so I'm using this uh, uh, schematic diagram to summarize what I have today. So there is some uh, probably internal one, plus some anthropogenic faulting, favor less warming in the tropics. And this one can uh, act as a wave source to generate a wave train to the two poles. And one to favor warming there, another favor sea ice change uh, uh, over West Antarctica. Yeah, I want to stop here. Okay, thank you. So let's have one quick question. Okay, so it's consistent with the way I think about it. Then. But uh, one, I, one thing, um, question that I have is if you go back with three, four slides, the one internal versus external, um, one for that, yeah, right? So uh, why do we assume that uh, you know, global warming is going to be linear? Because um, our system is not linear. So, for instance, we, would, uh, we talk about, you know, legend of the sea ice um, that had impact on circulation. So, before the sea ice melts, you know, uh, the forcing the response would be different uh, from, you know, once sea ice start to melt. So, whatever variable uh, you look at, the, 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 the trend may not be just linear. So, I just... Yeah, yeah I think you're all right, right? Yeah, I think it's yeah, still very new, uh, this... Uh, New thing to me. So, but I think that if you look at the real trend, it's not like a really linear trend. It's still like a step, step, uh, step like jump, uh, the jump, yeah. right? So, yeah. What I'm saying is, that how do you know that there's necessarily the internal variability? That's what I'm asking. Because the very simple assumption is the model, yeah, model cannot capture the, the model. The false response in the model cannot capture that one. So the first thing, the response is this probably not due to the. So we have to say either our model is, the, is poor, some physics cannot capture by our, our model, or the thing we, 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 we see from observation is not false response. Okay, so two possibilities. Really, yeah, right? two possibilities. But uh, if the first possibility is right, I don't know how can we deal with the climate change problem, right? Uh, well, I think it's better to say we don't know rather than... You know, yes, I agree. Right? Yeah. Okay, we, we have more, more time for discussion. Than just...